Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. Today I am going to discuss another disease of large ruminants and small ruminants that is known as mastitis. But because in our country, large ruminants like cows and buffaloes are the major type of dairy animals, basically kept for milk purposes. So we will be discussing this disease from bovine point of view. That's why this lecture is about bovine mastitis in large ruminants. So first of all, the introduction of this disease. Mastitis is defined as inflammation of one or more quarters of the udder irrespective of the cause. So what is, first of all, the first question arises, what is udder? Udder is also known as the memory glands of the animals. So because dairy animals are kept for milk purposes, so this is, udder is the one of the most important part of the animal. So if there is any problem in the udder, so automatically the milk production of the animal will be affected. So because of this reason, mastitis is one of the most important disease of ruminants, whether they are large ruminants or small ruminants like sheep and goat. So any condition that results in inflammation of one quarter or one part of the udder or two parts of the udder or many parts of the udder. So this disease will result in the low production of milk and we will call this disease mastitis. So in this slide you can see that there are two types of the udder. So the first udder is the normal one and the second one is the inflamed. And this inflammation can occur due to any reason. It can be because of the microorganisms or it can be some non-infectious reason like a physical injury. So what are the cardinal signs of inflammation? So you know very well, these are swelling, pain, redness, warmness of the area and loss of the function. Loss of the function means low milk production. So what are the economical significance of bovine mastitis? So this is the most costly disease affecting dairy cattle around the globe. And as you know that Pakistan is among top 10 milk producing countries. So mastitis causes huge economic losses to dairy industry in the Pakistan. And the affected animals are often culled or slaughtered because of production losses. So if the mastitis occurs in an animal and if it is not properly treated and diagnosed on time, so it results in the culling. Culling means you have to sell that animal or you have to remove that animal from your herd. So it's of course a big loss. So what are other concerns of this disease? Why it is important to study? So the concern may be from the animal point of view and it can be from the human health point of view. So if we see in this slide from animal health point of view, there is loss of functional quarter or other. It means the disease can affect one teeth or more because there are four teeth in the udder. So mastitis can affect one teeth or two teeth or three or four of them. Similarly, milk production goes significantly down. The animal gets weaker day by day because of the infection in the body, because of the toxemia. And sometimes sudden death of cow can occur in per acute cases or acute cases. And what are the human health concerns? So the first one is the poor quality milk as the color, taste, consistency changes. 
these changes occur because of the inflammatory changes in the udder and this type of milk is of course rejected by consumers and it is low market value similarly the antibiotic residues because when you treat uh, an animal that is suffering from mastitis so because of the irrational use of antibiotics this can lead to the problem of antibiotic resistance in humans by consumption of milk containing antibiotic residues similarly if the person is consuming raw or unpasteurized milk that is taken from the animals infected with the mastitis and that mastitis because of some pathogenic bacteria so that pathogenic bacteria can also infect human as well but of course it will not cause mastitis but it can cause other type of infection in humans like staph aureus so what are the types of mastitis so there are basically two types of mastitis otherwise if you search in the literature in the books you will find some other types other type of classification as well but here for your ease because you are not veterinary students so i have divided or classified mastitis into two types subclinical mastitis subclinical as the name indicates the animal will not show the main sign the udder will look normal but of course there will be some inflammation inside bacteria will be present inside and the milk may appear normal or abnormal sometime in this case the milk production will be low and the most important thing is there will be high somatic cell count so what is somatic cell count so whenever there is inflammation anywhere inside the body so because of that inflammation cytokines are produced which results in the attraction and migration of wbcs to that site of inflammation so here here in the case of mastitis the because of the inflammation in the udder wbcs arrive to this site and their number increases and when the milk is taken from this animal so this milk will be containing high number of wbcs as well so if we, we count those wbcs we call them somatic cell count so in the mastitis whether it is subclinical mastitis or it is clinical mastitis so it is one of the indirect test in which you can take the milk and you count somatic cells and if it's high then we can say this milk is positive for mastitis now we come to the clinical mastitis as the name indicates the animal will show clinical signs and symptoms there will be high temperature or fever animal will be off feed the udder will look very swollen it will be hot it will show pain the animal will not allow the owner to touch the udder and the milk contains clots and clumps and sometimes blood as well the clinical mastitis is further divided into acute and chronic types now we come to the etiology as i said earlier mastitis can be because of the infectious reason or it can be due to other reasons which are non infectious so if we discuss the etiology from the infectious point of view so bacteria are the most important organisms that cause mastitis in most of the cases but in some cases fungi and some viruses may get also cause mastitis but that is not that common similarly there are some other reasons like physical injuries stress etc they can also result in the mastitis cases in the herd So, what is the source of infectious organisms? So, there are different sources of infectious organisms. It means how the organisms reach the udder. So, it can be infected udder of the animal suffering from mastitis. So, if a person who is taking milk from a animal that is already suffering from mastitis, and if he doesn't wash, his, if he doesn't wash hands, and with the same hands. the person touches the milker touches another healthy cow the udder of the another healthy cow so in this way because of the hands of the milker the infection can travel from one animal to healthy animal similarly if the hygienic condition in the farm or shed are not good there is dirt on the floor so some of the microorganisms can enter the body through other routes as well as 
through teeth opening. So, what are different types of microorganisms which cause mastitis? So, you have to remember three important bacteria, group of bacteria that are that cause mastitis in most of the cases. The first of them are streptococcus species, similarly staphylococcus species, and the third one, the most important, are the coliform bacteria. So, if you read quickly read this slide, you will come to know that there are three important streptococcus species which causes different types of mastitis, like streptococcus uberis, streptococcus discalecti, and streptococcus agalecti. Staphylococcus. You know that Staphylococcus is, an, is a very important bacteria that causes different types of infection in humans. Similarly, in animals, it also causes in different infections. And one of the species that we call Staph aureus, which is the most common one, it causes, it also causes mastitis. And if we don't treat the animal on time, we don't diagnose it in time, we don't properly treat the mastitis caused by Staph aureus. So this type of acute mastitis can then convert into chronic mastitis. Now we come to the coliforms. So in coliforms, the most important bacteria that causes mastitis is the E. coli. And the coliforms or E. coli cause mastitis mostly when the environment where the animal is kept is not clean. Similarly, there are some other types of microorganisms which, or bacteria which are uh, which cause mastitis sometimes, like Pseudomonas, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Corynebacterium pyogenes, Mycoplasma bovis, and sometimes some fungi and yeast can also cause mastitis. So, how the mastitis develops? So, you have to remember three factors: organism, cow, and environment. Pathogenesis, it is very easy. If you see this slide, if you quickly read it by yourself, you can understand how the mastitis takes place. Now we come to the diagnosis, which is the most important part of this lecture. The first one is the diagnosis, which is done with the help of clinical signs and symptoms and physical examination. And this is of course the duty of veterinarian or the doctor who treats, treats the animals. Similarly, if you take the milk from the mastitis infected animal, so the milk will sometimes show clots or flakes or sometimes blood. So this can also indicate that the, there is some problem in the udder. Similarly, we have another very important test, a very simple one to perform that is the surf mastitis test or California mastitis test. So in surf mastitis test, you take surf solution and you take the milk from each quarter in different cups. You add that surf solution that you have made from the common surf or detergent you use in your homes. You mix it in that milk sample and if the milk changes into a gel-like appearance, if the milk shows gel-like appearance, it gives an indication that this milk is containing high somatic cell count and which has resulted in the appearance of milk into gel and it indicates a positive mastitis test. Similarly, we can also perform somatic cell count as I discussed earlier. It can be done on the individual milk sample or it can be done on the bulk milk sample. When you collect milk from different animals and you pour it together, and if you take sample from that milk sample, and if there is high somatic cell count, so you can say that this milk is from the herd that has high number of infected animals. Similarly, isolation and education of the gazette agent by culture. So this is the gold standard, but of course it is costly and it requires lab facilities. So in field, most of the time, we use surf mastitis test or California mastitis test to detect mastitis. Treatment and control. 
So treatment as it is most of the time it is caused by bacteria. So broad spectrum antibiotics are available. So if you use them properly on time, so the animal responds well and animal can recover. But if the treatment is not initiated on time, the, pro and the antibiotics are not properly selected and used. So the acute mastitis can convert into chronic mastitis that is very difficult to treat. So my question here from students is, is there any vaccination for mastitis? If yes, so you have to search this question through internet and this is your assignment. Thank you very much.